In this video, we're going to be talking about what the highest value of e can be such that n factorial is divisible by p to the e, where p is a prime. So the first thing we need to know, obviously, is what n factorial means. If you don't know what n factorial means, it's just multiplying consecutive numbers all the way up to n, starting from 1. So you have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 dot 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 all the way up to n itself. Now the reason why finding the highest power of p a prime such that this prime still divides n factorial is useful is because we can use it to prime factorize factorials and it's also useful when you just need the power of a certain prime inside of n factorial. So obviously we would first start by finding the number of multiples of the prime p inside of n factorial. And we can do this simply by dividing n by p. However, n by, divided by p might not always give us an integer, so we'll have to take the floor of that. The floor of any number, x, is just the largest integer that's less than x. For example, the floor of 6.21 would just be 6 because that's the largest integer less than the number that we are flooring. We may think that we are done, but there's a problem with this method, because there are other numbers that might be inside from the list of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n. For example, p squared, which counts p twice. So this means that we also have to count the number of multiples of p squared inside of n, and we'll, in this case, we only have to add one more exponent of p. So we're just adding the floor of n over p squared. Now the reason why we're only adding one instead of adding two is because we already counted one of those, one of the p squareds inside of n over p, but we just have to count one more in n divided by p squared to make this p squared count 2. Now, we can then go on to multiples of p cubed, because p cubed counts p three times when we're trying to find the exponent of p that divides n. So we do the same thing with p cubed. And the reason why we're still only adding one, the, one of these only one instead of adding multiple is because we already counted p cubed once and here, here, and here. And since we counted p cubed already two times, we just add one more right here to get p cubed counted three times like it should be. Now, of course, as you can see, there's definitely a pattern going on here. And if we continue it, we're just going to keep going on with the exponent of p, p getting gradually bigger. And in the end, we just keep going until this value right here, the floor of n over p to some power, is equal to 0. Because when it's equal to 0, the rest of the numbers in this sequence will always be 0 eventually. So we're just in order to find the highest exponent of p that still divides n factorial, we're just looking for the we're just we're just trying to find the value of this formula right here, and we can evaluate it until one of the terms of this form is zero. So we can do an example. Suppose our prime is 3, and we want to find the highest power of 3 such that it still divides 12 factorial. So we're just going to use our formula. 12 divided by 3 floored is 4, because 12 divided by 3 is 4, and the largest integer that fits in 4 is 4. So we have 12 over 3 floored is 4. And then 12 over 3 squared, 3 squared is 9, is 1, the floor of this value. And 12 over 3 cubed floored is 0. So if we keep going, 
the rest of the terms will also always be zero. So we only the only really terms that matter in this case are 12 over 3 floored and 12 over 3 squared floored. And when we add these values together, we get that there are 5, that the value is 5, that n equals 5. So the highest power of 3 that fits in 12 factorial is 5.